Hello, in this clip I'd like to teach you a little bit more about the Mojo Portal setup system and how we can use it to install database tables, store procedures for our features. So first we have to design those things. In the real world, if I'm dealing with you know a business client, um, I might start with like either a hand-drawn or a sketch flow kind of UI approach to work with the business customer because it's easier to talk to them in visual terms of what the program or application is going to look like and you can figure out from the screenshot or the drawing or mock-up what database fields you're going to need for your feature. And we've got a pretty good idea of what we want for our guestbook feature. To get started, I could start just creating a table in my tutorial database, which the site is using right now, but really since I want to be able to install it with a script, I'm going to use a empty database I've created called Scratchpad and I'm going to create my tables there and then I'm going to script them off to create my installation scripts. First thing I'm going to do is uh, say or add a table. Oops, here in Scratchpad, new table. And the first column I'm going to have I'm going to call item good. It's going to be a unique identifier going to be a primary key of the table. And then I'm also going to have a module grid, which will be a unique identifier, not null. Module ID is kind of a duplicate, but these come in handy for a couple reasons we'll talk about in another clip. This one is an integer. And then uh, now the things that we want the user to enter, like uh, name, and we will make that a uh, nvercare255, should be plenty big, uh, I'm not going to allow nulls in that, and we might want to capture their email address. Go ahead and make that and work here. Five. I probably could go with a hundred, just accounting for that really long email address. <laughs> uh, actually, probably yeah. Let's make that hundred. That's even way longer than most of them. But you definitely want to think of what's the longest email address you're ever seeing that you're gonna you know want to support. Um, will we make that required? Mm. We can put an empty string in there if we want to, uh, if we don't require it from the UI, but let's let's say that's required, not null. And then we want the user to be able to enter their location, you know, what city, state they live in, maybe. We'll make that in their care. 255 ought to be enough. And then what else would, maybe if they have a website, URL, we could capture that. Probably 255 and plenty for that. And then we want to let them enter a comment. Now, I'm going to use NText here because um, supporting backward compatibility to SQL 2000. But if you were developing this feature for yourself, if you don't care about older versions of SQL, probably you would want to use NBearCare Max on that, which uh, is really the recommended for the newer. SQL 2008. So for now I'm going to use NText, but like I say, you could use NVercare Max. In fact, when I make the SQL Azure version, it has to be in NVercare Max because NText is not supported. Now we'll capture the created UTC time. We'll make that a date time field. Now we could put a default value here uh, for this field but I generally pass it in from .NET code uh, in case the database is not on the same server then the function get UTC date, uh, date would not necessarily match the web server so I prefer to pass in dates such as that and I think it might be a good idea to capture the created from IP address because if you start getting really blasted by some spam script entering uh, guestbook entries, you might want to know that IP address and be able to ban it. So we'll call that uh, care. we'll just call that care 
50 should be plenty for an IPv4 or an IPv6 address. And so that's probably it. Now what else? We'll go ahead and name our table Acme underscore guestbook. And we might want to add an index on um, module good. It already gets one on the primary key. Um, but we'll add one on module good because we're going to want to be able to delete by that. So it would be handy to have that. And uh, we might want to be able to search on name. So we might really want to look up the user you know, who posted in the guest book by their uh, name. So we'll go ahead and index that field. And that should do it for now. We'll close that. We'll save the table again. Six minutes. We've got to wrap this up within 10 minutes and go to the next clip if needed. So we've created our table. Now uh, we'll go with just installing the table. We'll worry about the stored procedures in the next clip that's only have four minutes. So what we want to do now is, is script this thing off. And so we just go tasks, um, generate scripts, and we're on the search scratchpad database and the things that I always check here is SQL 2000 compatibility and script use database false we don't want to force a specific database name on people in these scripts and we want to make sure we are scripting the indexes so I choose true there everything else I accept the defaults so I click next and I choose tables. It would show stored procedures as an option, but we don't have any in this database yet. And I'll select that table, and we'll just let it uh, generate to a new query window, and it will generate. So now we've got our table script, and we can just go ahead and uh, we can just save it from here. I was going to uh, where I want to put that is uh, in our in our Acme projects, Acme Web Setup, Applications, Guestbook, Schema Install Scripts. Now I need a new folder for MS SQL. And I want to be able to save this not as a .sql file, but as 0.0.0.1.config. And that's our very first version, is, and we just increment as we need new scripts. So, now, um, if we go back to Visual Studio, uh, I think we've already created in our guestbook project to copy the uh, setup folder in our post build event. Yes, we have. So, what we want to do now is just build it. And that way it's copying the script that we just created, and we can confirm that it, it did that if we look. Here. Oops. If we go to web setup applications, guestbook, scheme to install scripts, and there it landed there. So now if we go to the browser and we visit the setup page, and we're looking for it run our script. There it did. Run in script, guess book. So it created our table and we could verify that it is actually in the, the uh, tutorial one database now. Acme guess book. There it is. So that showed how we got the table installed. Uh, I think that's about it for this clip. In the next clip uh, we'll show about stored procedures and how we can upgrade uh, and add more things and make changes to the database.